Welcome back to Morning Trade Live. It's time now to go inside out on some stocks that are going to be heavily impacted by Black Friday today. And to do that, let's welcome in Tom Plum. He's portfolio manager of the Plum Balance Fund. Tom, thank you for joining us today. Uh, thank you, Renita. It's glad, I'm glad to be here. Excellent. We're glad to have you. So tell us something. First, why do you say that Black Friday is not what it used to be, other than the obvious people overnight camping out in front of Best Buy? Why do you say that? Uh, one, because the extended time of promotions and the personalization of promotions. So I think that those two things are, are really going to have an impact this year. And it might mean that even though there's a significant uh, mixed signals about what people will spend, there's going to be a lot of potential misinterpretation of data because some people have already bought a lot of things, some things will continue to buy. There's not a fear of shortages, so I think that the period might be extended. But uh, primarily, uh, this will also be a time that we're going to see the first time that extensive use of artificial intelligence and and even potentially the impact of the GLP drugs on the holiday season. Mm. So it's a whole different environment than we've seen other years. You can't just knee jerk say people have money, they're going to spend it. I think we're going to see them spend a lot of money on gifts. But you know, some of the studies show people's intention is to spend maybe 13% more than last year. But at the same time, they're also more price conscious. That is so true. I've been hearing the same type of data. And then also you mentioned how people may be eating a little bit differently because of the weight loss drugs that they're using. I saw a report earlier this week that said that folks are planning to eat less. They're already shopping less and that Thanksgiving dinner was probably a little bit cheaper because of that for them, or they mm -hmm. didn't buy as much, might not have been cheaper because of the inflationary prices. But let's talk about a couple of stocks you're looking at. You're looking at Elf Beauty and Constellation Brands. Why are those two names on your radar? Well, let's say uh, the cosmetics, the beauty, uh, that is one of the categories that has been gaining share and shows significant intent for continued purchases. Uh, Elf is a company that has really been gaining market share. It has multiple distribution points. And uh, it's, you know, there are not many companies in what you would call a consumer staple area that's been growing 70% uh, year over year. It faces some tougher comparisons, but uh, the extended use of reorders and things like that, uh, this company we think is really well positioned and in an area that at first was a little discounted saying, oh, people during the pandemic weren't using much makeup and things, but uh, it's continued uh, well beyond that. And now, of course, you're getting some tougher comparisons year over year but still looks really strong and in a good category that's probably going to grow at least 8% uh, year over year. And then you have pricing and market share gain. Right, Elf Beauty alone is up more than 100% year to date. Mm -hmm. This month it's gained more than 23%. You're absolutely right when it comes to just the uh, fanfare behind this brand in particular, rising through the ranks of its peers. But mm -hmm. talk to us about Constellation Brands and why this is a pick for you. Well, Constellation Brands is a little bit uh, in contrast because uh, obviously they're the largest wine producer and uh, and in North America now they have the number one brand in uh, in beer. So Constellation is uh, has Miomi and Robert Mondavi wines and uh, during holidays you certainly have celebrations and premium uh, wines being used. Uh, but what has been happening is they've been gaining a significant market share in the beer industry in North America, where they have the Modelo brands, Corona, to name a couple. And uh, Modelo is now the number one beer brand in North America, or in the United States, I should say. And uh, we think, you know, people are going to celebrate. They're going to have family. They're going to be in. And uh, this is a company that not only has been gaining market share, but then because of that, they've been gaining shelf space. And uh, as people are home, they're going to imbibe. And uh, this company trading at 
basically 20 times next year's earnings is trading cool. at the standard beverage multiple, even though we think it's got a lot on its plate and it will continue to grow pretty fast. I have been fascinated at how this brand has reinvented itself mm -hmm. over the years. That's been cool to watch. But let's switch gears briefly because we're looking at credit card names as well. But you like American Express more than the others. Tell us why. Well, one, uh, we will continue to see the trend that you're going to use plastic, you're going to use electronic means to pay for things that you buy. Certainly, if you're buying inter uh, on the Internet, you're going to use your credit cards or some form of electronic payment, often backed by a credit card. Uh, but we are conscious of the fact that people are concerned about uh, the consumer being stretched. And so not only will they use the card, but you also want to know that they're going to pay you back. And American Express typically, and right now, has a default rate that's one third of the industry. Yeah. So you're going to get the people who have money typically use American Express or the American Express users are more affluent. They pay their bills. And so it's a nice way to pay play uh, the consumer and the holiday season and spending patterns that we've been seeing. All right, we'll see that. And also it has several different rewards programs depending on the cards you get. Tom Plum, stay with us for a brief moment so we can bring in Tom White. Tom White, let's look at what an example trade would look like for American Express. It is doing okay this year so far, yeah. year to date, it's up around 11%. What would an example trade look like? Yeah, uh, you know, uh, what Tom stated that, uh, you know, American Express has got that affluent consumer that's still using that card. Uh, then you look at some of the other credit card companies, the Swipers, and that's uh, Visa and MasterCard. Visa is at record highs, and American Express is not. So mm -hmm. if it does have that ability to make up some ground here, I looked at a strategy uh, that gives myself a little bit of duration. Uh, it's pretty aggressive to the upside, and you've got to be comfor comfortable owning the shares if it does pull back below 160. So I looked at a combo trade here where I'm going to help finance the purchase of a call in January, the 165 strike call and then I'm gonna sell the 160 strike put in January. You pay roughly about a $2 debit for this combo or risk reversal trade. Uh, and if you pay $2, your break even to the upside where you're profitable is gonna be at 167. That's about a percent and a half above the current share price. So you don't need a big jump in the stock over the next 56 days, just a, you know, a, 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 a basically a small uh, gain here to the upside. But then if you look at the risk profile here, down at 160 is where you start getting some pain on this one. Uh, so you've got to be comfortable owning the shares. If it does pull back below 160 ahead of expiration in the next two months, you'll have to purchase those shares if you stay short that put. But this is one way that you can take advantage of an aggressive bullish stance here by helping pay for uh, the bullish call with a neutral to bullish put. All right. That sounds like a pretty good plan. Yeah. Now, let's go back to talk to Tom Plum and talk um, AI and Black Friday. This has obviously been the hottest topic this year, AI, but you can't talk AI without talking about NVIDIA. We had a brief conversation about it earlier on this stock. It is blazing hot, up more than 200% year to date. Why is this your play for AI? They are the engine. You know, it goes back to the old adage that uh, when you were searching for gold, it was better to buy Levi and the companies that made uh, shovels <laughs> than to actually search for gold. This is the company that's the great enabler of AI. And um, we're seeing the use of it, in a, and especially in this season, you know, people talk about will AI actually increase productivity and how much, but we're certainly seeing that it increases the ability to have personalized promotion, for example, and that requires data. Mm. Everything requires data. This is the company that's leading it. You're absolutely right. It's up dramatically this year, but it looks like its uh, earnings are going to be up almost 400 percent you know over 12 bucks Ooh, from three bucks wow yeah and it uh people are projecting even though the you know, there's some question about how the chinese will react and things and what the what products they can sell the chinese you're still talking about a company that's probably going to earn over 20 bucks next year and when you start to go to that number small has actually come down 
even though its stock's gone up dramatically. Mm -hmm. um, so um, until there's some sign of slowing down need for this data and that there's anybody who's come up with a competitive product that would actually displace them, uh, I, I encourage people to go to their website and see some of their presentations about their vision for the future, and it's very exciting. I mean, it's been proven that this company is literally light years ahead of its peers in the space. It came out of the the starting gate with way more data to work with on the top and just way more tools. But we're going to leave it there with Tom Plum. Thank you so much for Renita, joining Renita, thank you. It's great to see you and be on your show. Of course, and happy holidays to you. Now let's bring back in Tom White mm -hmm. because you're gonna trade NVIDIA. Walk yeah. us through an example trade. Yeah, a little bit more conservative on this uh, this example hmm. trade. Post earnings, you know, revenue over eighteen billion dollars. That was actually about the whisper number. The company said they'd make about uh, sixteen point two billion. So it came in ahead of estimates. I'm not surprised that we're seeing a little bit of a pullback in the shares from those all time highs that we saw earlier in the week. So we looked at something a little bit more conservative. You've got competition coming down the pipeline. AMD. They came out with an announcement today. They're delaying their chip deliveries that they made specifically for. China. China, mm -hmm. they delayed those into the first quarter of next year. So a little bit more conservative. Going out to the December monthly cycle, so three weeks to expiration. I looked at just selling a neutral to bullish put vertical in here. I want to stay risk defined. This is a high price stock. It's got a high beta. It can move pretty, uh, pretty drastically. So going out and selling the 475 strike put and then against it, because I want to stay risk defined, buy the 460 strike put. So $15 wide short neutral to bullish put vertical here. You're collecting roughly about four and a half dollar credit so that's what you can make four hundred fifty dollars but it's conservative because uh, I've got a cushion to the downside before I start getting hurt on a strategy like this okay break even is just below 471 on this one that's about three three and a half percent below the current share price so you've got that bumper to the downside you've got a probability of that uh, break even just around 470 about 65 percent probability that the stock will be above that current price uh, over the next three weeks into expiration. And this is one of those strategies that you pick a price where you'd maybe be comfortable owning it or you're comfortable it's gonna stay above. And you can do this uh, this type of strategy repetitively, like on a week to week or month to month basis, mm -hmm. depending on how comfortable you are, but a little bit more conservative here in NVIDIA. Yeah, because it's even though it's a very hot stock this yeah. year, it's been really volatile yeah. as well, you know, within the in-between interim um, swings that you've seen yeah. it have. But thank you so much mm -hmm. for joining us, Tom White. Yep. We appreciate it.